so professional. You are about to get highly <laughs> educated with <laughs> the Cannabis Closet Podcast with Canna Queen and MJ. Uh, how do I? Oh, I'm Canna Queen. <laughs> That's MJ. <laughs> <laughs> This is an adult content show. I don't know if you would have guessed that <laughs> from this uh, with no limitations on subject language or actions. Opinions, views and expressions may or may not be that of the hosts, their guests and their subsidiaries. Please note that we are not medical physicians, nor are we attorneys. And any information shared is based solely on our personal research and knowledge. Thanks for rolling up and showing up. Enjoy the show. That's been your trigger warning. Hi. Hi. We're in the same room together. We're high. We're high. We are. <laughs> Say hello in the comment section. Let us know you're here. Uh, we have Wiley Price on today. You guys didn't see. I'll post that back up, actually. We can we can stare at his face for a second. We got Wiley Price on the show today. We're going to catch up with him, see how he's doing. Um, uh, also... Uh, for, for future reference so that you can mark your calendars. Uh, we have representatives from Good Times coming on to talk about this wonderful product. It's like a jello shot, but with cannabis. So it's pretty amazing. And um, that's on the 20th, 220, mark your calendars. And on 222, we got Deb Nash. Uh, we're going to sit and talk to her also about Missouri. Um, she uh, has like a cannabis questions uh uh facebook page we found her to be quite well versed what's going on in her area so we are excited to um have her on and talk to her very very soon that's on the 22nd ooh, ooh. what's up everybody okay look at this ooh, ooh. listen we got little bobby customs in the house what's up what's up uh, Bar BJ, thanks for coming in today. Uh, Kelly Rogers, of course, she's always here. What's up, Kel? Hey, everybody. Up, Next is probably here too, or he's on his way in. Cannabis Jello shots. They're so delicious, they're pretty, actually. Pretty, yeah, yeah. Um, we got to try them at BizCon, and then uh, they have a coffee shot too, so you can add it into your coffee. I didn't see it in your fridge, um, so. I Mm, that's curious yeah i'm sure it got purged uh potentially yeah yeah because i didn't i didn't drink it i didn't look hard oh well so then it might be there somewhere <laughs> i just things um things happen in in the space this thing is like choking me i swear to God. is it a combination <sighs> of your your necklace or something pulling no, i don't know i don't know it just keeps rolling back like ugh, trying to take me out um Things get moved around, but they're not gone in this house. And that that is true. That's the truth. I don't know why that got all wobbly about figures. Did y'all see that? That was crazy. Anyways, okay. So listen, we're going to uh, get this show rolling. Our guest will be here soon. We told him he could like come in a little bit later. Let us get our little banters out of the way. Um, again, our guest today is Wiley Price the fourth. He was um, on our... He was on our show for the Amendment 3 debate, and he was actually in the room with us, <clears throat> if you will remember correctly. So let's see. What was it? Where was I? Oh, I was here. OK, so welcome, everybody. <laughs> uh, why am I mad today? There's a couple of things. Actually, this isn't like a why am I mad? It's just a thought that I had today. And I was well, it stemmed from something which stemmed from me being <laughs> mad about something su super silly. Um, so you guys make sure you hydrate. Call dibs. No, <laughs> no, call dibs. So which, which when your friends got I mean, your seat, you don't have you to. You don't have dibs. to call dibs. I I think that's the rule. This isn't this isn't the rule that I, I'm going to end with. The rule that I think that we should adopt. Uh, just because, anyways. So let me just tell the story. So last night we uh were at a. Super Bowl party. We were we were sponsoring the event. We had um, kitty tails available. Kitty tails made with uh, pop this queen kitty. The last night's kitty tails were made with the nearly naked variety of the pop this, 
and we had a vodka version and a tequila version and i believe there was some sprite involved i don't know anyways <laughs> but there was alcohol being served and it was free what's up what's up, what's up? The alcohol was free and which is why, so we were going to table at the event, but then, you know, when we table, we can lose a lot of money. So we, if we table, we want to be able to sell the product. And when alcohol is free, we find that sales are, you know, so. Yeah, and then we're just standing there behind a table right. and everyone's and like, do we have alcohol? No. And I wanted to watch the game. Right. And also when you're in a space where Cannabis is not the absolute norm. Well, it is in the space, but for the event, it wasn't just cannabis people um, because it was Super Bowl and everybody loves Super Bowl. And so um, when when that also happens, a lot of times people will turn their nose up even at CBD products because they don't fully get it, you know. So anyway, so <clears throat> we were there as sponsors and um, because of the nature of the event and the sponsorship of the event, uh, the smoking levels were the second and third floor. And there were um, TVs in a couple of rooms on the second floor and there were TVs downstairs. And uh, so anyways, so we went up after Rihanna's amazing performance. Um, <laughs> everybody knew the answer to the question they were asking. So we're not going to get into that. Congratulations, though, Rihanna. Um, so we sit, we're sitting on the couch, and, uh, and our friends are in there. We've got some friends in there. Uh, shout out uh, to uh, Shaw and, uh, and Mondo was in there, and uh, Antoine was our new friend that was our in new there. friend. Um, so uh, all very handsome men by the way so we we just like surround ourselves with beauty um and so we're sitting on the couch and uh and, and we're, we're smoking and we're having a Chilling. great great time and then i need to get up and hand our keys to to my husband right so i have to get up and be like here because he's leaving he's like i'm out of here and um and he had a great time by the way because there were places where there wasn't like a lot of smoke. They had a dance floor. There was like a dance a floor dance and there was a, like a music. Floor. It was upstairs. It was great. So, so in the time that it took me to get up and hand my keys to him and come back, which was like less than 30 seconds, somebody had sat in my seat and I just stood there and looked at him like, like, like my you friend is getting ready to come back. You saw me sitting here the whole time. You know that we're together. You know, we're all like goofing. And uh, I go, yo, man, my man, get up. Like I was said something like that, you know, like I was trying to be chill. Like, yeah, yeah, I had already said, no, she is. She right. had already told She's him coming to get up. back. And in that sense, in that second, she was back. Yeah. And he was like, just for and I was like, no, she's standing. And right so there. <laughs> what had happened too is somebody stole his seat. Not my problem. OK, listen, um, don't steal my seat because somebody stole your seat. Yeah, okay. You ask for your seat back if you want to. So, so then he gets up reluctantly, but then he's like, "Fuck me!" And I was like, "Fuck me!" <laughs> like, fuck, what are you talking to? You took my seat. Like, what? And then, um, I guess his girlfriend. They were both vending in that room, which I, you know, you told me that she had been complaining. Yeah, she was like. It's so smoky in here. And like she will open the window. She's the one that opened oh, the window. Oh, she's so the one that kept opening the fucking window. Yeah. It's so cold yes. outside, you guys. Yes. And she opened it all the way. And so I was like, so I closed the curtain around it. So then it would at least just, you know. I had no idea she was the one. She was probably pissed at us. Mm -hmm. We had been there at the beginning of the game, too. Because we were like, when the game started, we were in that room, too. So we started in there and we were sitting on the floor. And then when we came back in, there was couch space available next to our friends. So we sat in it. Right. And nobody, nobody who came in and was like, yo, that was my seat. And we would have gotten up for that. So we were like, so we were, cause we sat there for almost the entire um, second half. Well, for the whole second half, we were there. Yeah. But like at the point when this conversation anyways, so she starts cussing at me too. And I was like, who the fuck are you talking to right now? Yeah, as a vendor, talking to people that are guests, even though we were vendors as well, like, it's like, I was like, who the fuck is she talking? And then I looked at her straight look. I was like, and then she looked back at me like, 
like that, right? You know the you know the exchange. And I go, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> so, anyways, first thing I want to say is that I am glad that I no longer drink. Same. I'm glad I don't drink because also in the in the moments before, let me tell you. In the moments before that interaction, these two individuals were already like there there was three actually. There were three individuals. There was somebody who was shopping, but her her clothing thing was a like she had to get behind it. It was weird. It was a weird situation. It was the worst setup. She didn't even get up for the girl to look she at her clothes. She didn't she so didn't get up out of her why seat. The girl crawled around. She, she didn't back. get up out of her seat. The it was crazy. So anyway, um, so she was dropping clothes and then the, and then she got mad at the girl for dropping clothes. She was like, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to look. And then she like actually bought clothes from her. Yeah. I was like, wow. Okay. Cause she was kind of mean to her, but anyways, so, okay. So then that girl who was buying stuff kept blocking the TV during the biggest game of the year. Um, <laughs> even if you're there just for the commercials, get the fuck out of the way of the TV right now. Cause this, whatever you're blocking right now is important to somebody Someone. in this room right now. Okay. I know, listen, at the end of the world, we won't worry about the Super Bowl, but that wasn't what was happening. So get out of the way. Okay. Cause you're not made of glass. Um, so like, so move your ass. Like, that's what like. <laughs> you're not made of glass. Move yeah. your ass. Okay. She, yeah. So that's the rule. And she even said it herself. She's like, being drunk you know like she okay. called herself out and was like look at me so, and so that happened uh this this person was like complaining can you only smoke one joint at a time what 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 are you talking about ma'am <laughs> no 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 if you're not happy, like, like also, I get why she was unhappy because but she had clothing. Was, her dude also was a, rolling up and and yeah, he was right smoking there dudes too, like, right? So I get but also drinking because your clothes are gonna hold that that odor. But that's where we that's where we are right now. And also, so then, so then the dude also accident. Sometimes I don't think things are accidents, but anyways, judge for what you want. So accidentally opened a, a, I guess, shaken up can of, what was it that he was drinking? Seagram's uh, Jim Beam, like, Jim Beam mixed drink. Yeah, things. whatever. Like, what? why? I can't. Why y'all you know. do So mm. just opens that over the table where we're, like, where people, people are, are rolling, rolling up and stuff. And it goes everywhere. Did it land on someone's? I don't know if it landed. That was a really bad. I hope I didn't get frozen that way. Um, I don't know if it landed on somebody's stuff, but like potentially it could it have for could sure have. Yeah, because there because was like it was. it was a table full of rolling like paper rolling trays, like paper plates basically, ash trays and and like yeah, it was out there. So then didn't even clean it up right away. Like didn't even not in instead <laughs> instead of cleaning it up right away. He sat in my seat. And then got mad at me for requesting my seat back and reluctantly cleaned up his mess. Yeah. So, okay. So here goes what I think. <laughs> I, I, after all of me telling you exactly what I think, I'm going to tell you more of what I think. Okay. I think that in places that are marketed towards and slated towards our community uh, of consumption lounge type, if they are serving alcohol free for sale or whatever, I don't know what the whatever means. What I don't know what y'all do for alcohol. Uh, <laughs> to drink maximum. And I mean... That's all you get to, that's it. To drink maximum, we're in a consumption lounge. This is a lounge for cannabis. Yeah. And frankly, that's generous because your bars don't allow me a two joint minimum or maximum or whatever. At all. <laughs> and also I want to, I want to thank cannabis for 
after I asked her what the fuck was wrong with her, I turned to you and I just <laughs> looked at your face. And you're like, and I go, who the fuck does she think she's talking to right now? And then I reached into my bag, which was sitting in this in the space, and I never left. It was just sitting and rolled a blizzy, and then I smoked it instead of clocking a person. See, I also don't prefer alcohol being served there. If we're going to exactly, it doesn't make sense to me. And if we're going to do that, then first of all, they should allow me to, to have, you know. I think there was other like drama too throughout the night because of yeah. drinks. Yeah. Of so people. also, so, um, so my husband was with us and he said there was also some drama. I'm not exactly, I didn't inquire to that. I just came home and told him that I'm glad I wasn't drinking because I was like, I would have stood up. And there would have been, there would have been like some, some shit because mm -hmm. they were drunk mm -hmm. or at least somewhat inebriated. And I was just high and I was just like, you know, I just want to watch this fucking game and I want to see the commercials, yep. which brings me to why I'm mad also. <laughs> so, okay. But, but I think there should be a rule in consumption lounges or places that are marketed towards uh, cannabis or even psychedelics. That there, that if there is a consumption of alcohol at all, it should be a limit of two. That's it. I agree. I mean, I agree in that sense. And then, uh, you know, in this, it also in the way that they want to regulate us, it's like, then why don't you regulate how much people can drink, knowing that what exactly. it does? And yet people can just go everywhere and drink and as much as they want. Mm -hmm. And... Nobody, nobody, no blinks. one's, yeah, no one blinks. No, sometimes one. they pull out their camera and they video it so they can, they can embarrass them publicly on the internet, which that's sad. Don't listen. I, yeah, we've all had our moments and I just feel like, do you want your moment on the internet? Like, I don't know. I don't want the moment in my I brain. Mean, I want, I already have. A few. Mm -hmm. I, I want. I don't want my drunken moment on the internet unless it needs to be on the internet. Like if I'm if I'm saying some off shit, like, uh, you know, you you find these women who like think that when they're drunk they can say, well, they do. They just well, men too. But there, so so there's a woman on the internet right now. She's she's about to lose her job. She's about um. to lose her job because she's drunk on the internet. Talking shit about talking her patients. Bull. She delivers babies for a living. She delivers babies for a living. She's talking shit about her patient, her patients, and and the and the and the majority of her patients, I believe, are women of color because of the area that they live in. And so then she's she's classifying. Um, I'm mm -hmm. sure you can go find it on the internet. But, um, you know, I'm not going to give her a whole lot of attention. But, yeah, I mean, shit like that. So, like, this is alcohol. But, I mean, I guess I guess that's a good thing that alcohol did is, like, bring out the true colors of somebody. But also, it just is too <sighs> aggressive. It's just too aggressive. It makes people just sloppy and rude. Right. It, it brings out the worst in people. I feel like, um, yes, can it embolden you or yes, can it whatever, but make you feel loose. But um, it really just, I don't know, I, I guess just from my experiences of why I drank when I drank and um, why I don't drink now. Um, I mean, I'll have a drink. I do enjoy a beer or a cocktail, but I don't need to drink so many that, uh, you know, to to have courage to yeah, do something yeah, no. or um i've um, been plenty drunk and that was my 20s and some yeah, of my 30s some of my 30s <laughs> and, uh, and and i look back at pictures of me in my 30s and um i, I don't know i don't i don't know i'm like i look younger now <laughs> i i 
I'm I look so tired. Well, think about all the sugar, yeah, the sugar, what and we're doing true. to drink to invite you yeah. to drink and get that drunk. How late? I mean, I used to stay out all night and then work sleep, all day, sleep in and then work all night oh again and then go out. And then I had the opposite schedule, by the way, because I had a day job while all my friends were working night jobs. I had a day job and because I wanted to. I wanted to work in the legal field. So I was working. That's what I was doing. I was working for an attorney. And um, so I would go out with them and I would just be, whew, whew, I'll pull it together. I will pull it. That's what your twenties are for though. Pulling it together. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would rather give my money to the cannabis industry all day too. Um, that is absolutely true. But I would also prefer like, I mean, I wish that, I wish that a state would come along and do this right. I really do wish that. I want a state to come along and do this right. I want a state to come along and include the people who are already providing this plant to their community. Just because, look, you could fine, regulate their money, whatever. But like, uh, like they are the ones that are doing it the best. And we want to keep them. We, yeah. we need that talent. We need, yeah, protect, we need it. protect who kept it here. Or, um, and who fought and, to get it here. Like, it like here. literally they fought and they um, sacrificed. Understand it. Understand the plant. I really, honestly, when we're talking about this and, and people want the money, but they don't want to recognize or, or uphold um, the plant value. So they just want to keep pulling off of her leaves and yeah, bullshit. I so, love her. Uh, so. But on to the next, uh, what has made me angry? I think, I think, stay with me here. A lot of those Super Bowl ads were extremely whitewashed. One in particular kind of pissed me off. One in particular really pissed me off because I felt like it was tone deaf. I felt like it was super tone deaf. Uh... And, and, and anytime I see this action in like uh, comedy TV or like commercials as satire, I think, man, how tone deaf are you to to think that that is is funny or, you know, like cutesy or whatever? Um, that uncomfortable laugh in the room of yeah. like, yeah, like what, what, okay. So do you guys know the commercial I'm talking about? I just want to see if you guys know which one I'm talking about. If you guys were watching any commercials also tell me if you had a favorite, but say that, say this is my favorite, <laughs> <laughs> but also tell me what commercial you think I'm talking about. There's one commercial in particular where I was like, this is hella tone deaf. Like I was like, this is really uh there were what who thought this was a good idea like at all like this is a bad idea and it's in the top right of the um i, I feel like honestly it, i didn't pay too much attention to the commercials either no, I, I mean in this in this uh, list yes, um i but, think keep going down okay i think keep going a lot of them. You only watched Rihanna. That's probably a good call. Okay. This, this, stop it right yeah. here. Um, so, see, it made it was like number thirteen or whatever of the light commercial. So it's pretty low on the list, but um, it was the Kia commercial for those wondering. Um, where, if you guys were watching the commercials, it was called. It's called Binky Dad. So, so the dad forgets the binky for the baby. And then he has to get into his Kia and then he has to drive all this treacherous and they terrain. make it like a superhero kind of action like, movie yeah, style. Like, like, like he's going to defuse the bomb. So like, mm -hmm. and then he's all over social media because Kia's somebody like videotape, like some kid like was like this dad forgot it. And she's hashtag got a million followers, man. hashtag binky dad. Right. And then, so then he's all over social media. So anyways, then people know him and then help him with shortcuts and stuff. And at one point in the commercial, the cops are chasing the car in support of this man getting a binky for his kid. 
And I thought, it's kind of tone deaf, don't you think? I mean, not to make a big deal out of something that's supposed to be funny, but I didn't think it was funny. I was just like, because that, so because because the because like at the end of the day the police aren't our friends, right? The police are not. They're not doing that. They're not doing that for certain. For certain, not even I can't even think of a universe where that exists. <laughs> what is that universe called? Uh, Rosario World. Yeah, um... doesn't exist. So I was kind of mad about it. I was like, stink guy. What? Why would you, anytime there's a comedy or a satire situation where the, there's a police chase <coughs> with like full on like helicopters and like, and like, and like, what do you call them? Uh, the of light lights and sirens, but like the, mm -hmm. the floodlights and all mm -hmm. the shit. I just think that's tacky. I think that it's tone deaf in America. It's tacky that they're you you know that people use it as a joke. And then they're like a, high five in the cops you know, like a... when they did you get the pinky like the cops run into his house did you get the pinky and the, and you know yeah. it's the typical white guy you know and then he gets back and it's the wrong color pinky you and your privileged wife. And your privileged fucking kid don't even like a damn binky like that you that you that, you know, you just uh, risked all your life and limb and literally and what everyone's life and limb as you're running. You Is know, that what rich people experience from Kia the police? Across, uh, yeah. Is that what rich white people experience from the police? Because there was they were also glamorous ish, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to hydrate because that really did make me that. I mean, I was, I mean, I know it's sometimes I think it's silly because it's it right. But then, but then I'm like, um, is it silly at all? Because, because, um, and oh, just a minor new one that I didn't write down, but this, I ordered this. It's like a little cuticle oil. Don't worry about it. But anyways, we cannot save the planet as individuals when shit like this is happening. This is a corporation problem. I'm going to use this for shipping. We're going to, so, re yes, reuse we'll it. Reuse so we use it. Oh, reduce. don't look at that. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at that. Okay. So I'm kind of mad about that too. I see our guest mm -hmm. is in the green room. Let's oh, see well, where we are. Um, um I just want to uh, touch on this real quick and then we'll bring you in. So give us just a second. Uh, we just have to do our history corner and then we will bring you right on in. So um, I just wanted to finish up the food one because we love food. We love food. <laughs> and recently I was told to cut back on the fried foods and I was like, I'm from the South. <laughs> like, I don't know what you mean. Moderation. I um, also love potatoes. <laughs> every kind of potato. Every kind of potato. There's you not tell a me. Potato. You try to tell me a potato that I might not like, and I'll we'll check. We'll find out. Let's find out. I'm up Nothing for the comes challenge. To mind, right? Not off the top of my head. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I love potatoes. Mm -hmm. I mean, not raw. I want them cooked, but I want them. Or when I'm uh, prepping them, I'll eat a couple bites raw with some salt. Okay, no, mm -hmm. I won't do that. So, okay, I don't like it all the ways. Okay, anyways, let's get on to what not like a whole potato, just a bite. Uh, just where did I put that? Okay, I just needed to see where that was. Okay, now I just want to share my, my other screen. That one, that one. So, we were actually talking about this the other day, but we got, um, Okay, send send that suggestion to uh to our um to our you're on YouTube. Um well we'll we'll pop the, the email up here in a few moments. 
you can send that to us because I would love to have her on. We also we want to support um, women. We want to support people of color. We're tired. We're tired of um, white men getting all of the attention in the cannabis industry. It's ugh. <laughs> um, not all. OK, listen, I guess I have to preface it now with that. Uh, let's see. We covered the first two lovely women. Listen now to that. Um, so I think we're into, uh, the white house. Oh, I love her story. I love this story so much. The white house head cook, uh, Laura Dolly Johnson. So if you know anything about her or about this, uh, definitely feel free to comment. Um, let's see, hold on. I just need to look. Okay. Thank you. Um, so if you, if, if you don't know anything about her, this is the first I actually have learned about her, but I really I just love, I just love her. Okay. Um, so uh, 1852 to 1918, uh, an insider once called the White House head cook the most respected person in the house other than the president's immediate family. Uh, the cook was charged with everything from planning elaborate menus to preparing the president's favorite dishes. Laura Dolly Johnson, a formerly enslaved black woman from Kentucky, held this position twice. Once in 1889 with President Benjamin Harrison, uh, he hired Johnson after firing his French chef. The fact that he chose Johnson's hearty bluegrass cooking over the chef's uh, hot couture couture cuisine <laughs> I don't know. That's good. was a Passion. stunning move <laughs> that made national headlines and waves among African Americans who were proud to see Johnson selected for the job. It had actually taken months of coaxing uh, to get Johnson who was happy in Kentucky with her life as a cook for a former union soldier and a lawyer, Colonel John Mason Brown to go to get her to go from that to the white house. So they were like, they had to talk her into it. Um, so I love that. She, she was like, no, She's like, mm, I'm good. I, gotta, I think I'm about good. it. <laughs> good. In a time where that wasn't, that wasn't generally the case. Um, you couldn't say no to things, you know, you just had to do what you were told. Um, even though you, even, even free people had to do what they were told. Right. Um, when she arrived in, especially if the president, okay, think about that. She said no to the president of the United mm -hmm. States. I love that for her and for all of us. Um, when she arrived in December of 1889, her first major meal for the first family was a Christmas dinner that featured her Blue Point oysters, turkey with cranberry jelly, Maryland terrapin, mince pie, and plum pudding. Unfortunately, Johnson had to leave after seven months to care for her daughter, but she returned during President Glo uh, Grover Cleveland's second term. She worked for a year before Cleveland fired her, then attempted to rehire her. See, that's why stop being mad and doing things that you're going to regret later. OK, because then you can't you can't take it back. Um, so, so he tried to rehire her. Um, let's see. In a bold power move, Johnson refused his offer and went home to Kentucky. Uh, there she became one of the first black women to own a business on Lexington's main street catering and open, uh, and opening a number of restaurants, including one named White House Cafe. Um, this is what I admire most about Johnson is that she didn't let the sting of slavery hold her back. She moved forward negotiating life on her own terms. Um, and throughout her culinary career, she was always in control, even when she worked for other people. So she was like, yeah, that's what I call freedom. This is the author's little. Um, and then um, cookbook pioneer uh, Melinda Russell, uh, 1812 to uh, date unknown. Uh, when Matilda Russell self-published a domestic cookbook containing a careful selection of useful recipes for the kitchen in 1866, she was looking to make money, not history. But two years earlier, she had been uh, robbed of her life savings and fled Tennessee to Michigan. Uh, she hoped sales from the book would allow her to eventually return home. It's unclear whether she made it back. 
Uh, but I'd like to think that she did. She was a free black woman who had already supported herself and her son as a cook, uh, ladies nurse, laundress, and owner of a boarding house and pastry shop. So she was certainly up for the task. In 2000, Russell's cookbook was recognized as the first to be authored by an African-American after a culinary historian discovered the only surviving copy. It contains 250 recipes, mostly pastries, but also some savory dishes and home remedies. Uh, Russell keeps them short and simple with the assumption that readers have basic culinary skills to fill in the blanks. Uh, and though she was from the South, her recipes reflect uh, geographic, geographically diverse uh, palate. So she knew how to cook from a bunch of different regions. Um, so if you're looking for a good fried catfish recipe, uh, yes, please. You won't, <laughs> you won't find it among this collection. Bummer. Uh, but Russell preferred to fricassee hers instead. Oh, well, see, I will be, <laughs> I'll get into it. Um, I find it fascinating that Russell's cookbook didn't just add to American culinary history. It changed it. Um, Tony Tipton, a Martin author of uh, Jemima Code, called it Emancipation Proclamation for Black Cooks, freeing us from the stereotype that Americans cook only soul food. Big thanks to Melinda Russell for setting the record straight. Um, and we'll get into the other, there's, I think there's two more, maybe one or two more. Oh no, there's just one more. So um, yeah, we'll get, we'll get into civil rights organizer, Georgia Gilmore on uh, the next show, which is on Wednesday. Boom. Um, yeah. So super interesting. I love food. I love hearing those I love the history. historical points mm -hmm. and I want that cookbook now. I, I want to like find out what's in it. Yeah. I bet you can find it on Amazon. I hope they send it in a sensibly sized box. So mm. I doubt that they will. Check out your local bookstore. Maybe they can get it for you. Maybe. Especially here, like, down, like. Yeah, around here. Or even at a Durango. You never yeah. know. They have a That's little true. bookstore you go to. Check your local bookstore nifty. first if you actually leave the house anymore, ever. Uh, we have a guest today. Uh, you've seen him here before if you're a regular watcher of the show. Uh, Wiley Price IV, he's a serial entrepreneur, a marketing director, former state representative in Missouri. He's very passionate about voting rights and cannabis reform. Uh, if you'll remember, he was on our Amendment 3 debate show, uh, and he was he showed up in person, which was amazing. It was awesome. Um, his expertise is in policy and rule development with a focus on uh, cannabis regulation, Welcome our guest, Wiley Price. What's up? Hey, how's it, bro? How's it going? How's it going? You're you're a little bit more dressed down than you were last time we saw you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the comfy confines of my home, wear hoodies around here. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, us that's our too. work attire. Yeah, this one's like choking me out right now. I don't know what's going on. It's crazy. How have you been? Very well. Very well. Things have been good. And yourselves? We're doing well, you know, launching all the stuff and doing, going to all the places, meeting all the people, doing, right, doing right. what we're supposed to be doing. Right. Um, so are you getting into anything new these days? Um, yeah, plenty, plenty. Um, yeah, let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess, um, well, I guess, I guess I can start with the consulting. Um, I've been doing a lot of consulting. Actually, it's kind of uh, locally, it's, it's campaign season here, so a lot of uh campaign candidates and campaigns have been reaching out just to try to get a lay of the land and just kind of understand um, what they may be up against here uh, in the political landscape. Right. Um, as well as well, in, in regards to you all, what's, what's relevant to you all has also been doing some uh, cannabis consulting uh, for people who have been trying to seek licenses, understand the new laws, um, understand whatever the new regulatory issues are. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, other than that, I've just been kind of watching um, – you know, the landscape change in the last, you know, year, year and a half and trying yeah. to see how it affects the general public, how it affects black folks and how we can then, you know, uh, reposition and try to uh, insert ourselves into this billion dollar uh, industry that we have been locked out of. Right. Yeah. Um. So how are the new laws? How how are things going in Missouri, in, in your opinion? 
um, with the new laws? Are things rolling out smoothly? Are they as expected? Is there a little bit of like, oh, I didn't expect this to be like as well rolled out, but then other things are like kind of a disaster. What are what's going on out there? I mean, in my opinion, in, in regards, to, uh, I guess, in comparison to other states, I think it's been pretty streamlined. Uh, it's been pretty. I mean, going wreck after you've already gone medical is should be relatively easy. Um, you know what I mean? Medical mm -hmm. is the hard part. That's where all the red tape is at. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, once you just get down the criminal code and you figure out what's you know socially going to be palpable for people in whatever community or state you in, you can go wreck. Um, my concern wasn't going wreck. I, I was excited about going wreck. You know, right. sure, you know what I mean? But there, my, my issue with going wreck was how they were going wreck. Right. How right. they were putting in all this other unnecessary language that spoke to the business of wreck and not to the legalities of wreck. Um, and also, also like some of the application of some of the things that they were um, saying that they could do. And right. It's like, yo, like this isn't, I mean, here we are. I mean, we are, what we got, we, almost four months into it. Mm -hmm. I think I've heard about one expungement. Yeah, there have been a few. Oh, so I don't like this, this automatic I've, expungement that was going to free up. Yeah, there have been a few. There have been a few areas. more than, than one. Uh, but I think I think the number was like, this was reported by, I want to say Marijuana Moment maybe, like 3,900, somewhere around there. We, yeah. we talked about it a few a few shows ago, like a little back. But like we got other states doing like forty thousand and stuff. So in comparison, it's yeah, one. Is it? In um, comparison, like yeah, know, it's, it's other wise. states, um, we've had a really smooth uh, rollout as far as like the actual wreck. But in regards to like the language of what they said the bill would do or what it would be able to do, yeah, um, that's been as BS as I thought it was going to be. Um, and, you know, it just it, I guess it kind of is what it is. But at this point, you're just trying to figure out what is the new position at this point and what is the best yeah. way or the most optimal way for us to feed our families. I mean, I agree with you on that. I always say, you know, I, I you know, I get a, a, a little jaded about this from time to time, but I always say, uh, you know, we got to follow the laws as they're written. And then, you know, we got to work to change those laws in our favor. But it just seems almost like. You know, in Colorado, it seems like we're pedaling backwards in, in, in our medical space, right? The and the mindset of people is just not right. there. You know, everyone says, yay, free, you know, legalized cannabis, but they're not supporting it, the system. Right. And it loses momentum, I feel like. That's why we think it's really important to keep you guys coming through that are from Missouri, because we have been like really paying attention to what's going on out there. And, um, and we want to do this with other states too. So if you guys have, uh, if you guys in the other states have suggestions, we would love to hear them. But, um, but it, I think it's so important because cannabis loses momentum once people can just get it legally. Yeah. And so when, when people are looking the other way and going, yay, I can go buy my cannabis at where, you know, the store is legal and whatever, then, um, you know, they turn away and then these laws are passed or rescinded or whatever um, to like limit how much they can buy or increase the taxes. And they kind of do it like right under our noses where people, you know, don't want to bother to vote about it or don't want to bother to go to um, meetings about it, like uh, city council meetings when it's on the agenda, things like that. Um, and so, uh, guilty also guilty. Also, I used to go to all of the city council meetings in Durango when I worked, uh, within the industry and I actually paid my staff to go too because I wanted us to thrive as an industry. But after getting into ancillary world, I don't really do that as much. So I, I speak more here than I do necessarily put my hands in it. And, you know, my bad, I'll take accountability for that. But I, I, that's why we keep bringing you guys on and bring, we want to keep talking about it because I don't want, I know we have a lot of listeners out in Missouri and I don't want you guys to lose momentum. It's so easy to forget that just because you can buy it legally doesn't mean that it's, that is ended. Like you haven't ended prohibition. People are in Missouri Bro. still get arrested for cannabis possession. And public and, and public, uh, public use. Yeah. Um, so I mean, 
I guess in response to that, I would say where wherever was the momentum for a proper induction into Rick, wherever get- was the momentum, like the the the, the momentum mm-hmm. was fueled by confrontation. Yeah. Which it was split the cannabis world here, luck. Like, like, yeah, it did. Oh, yeah. Right. And, and so, I was gonna so, say we're in this bubble of space where we when we come to Missouri, the people who we interact with are in the cannabis space. So to us, it looks it looks like everybody's this is involved. A dream. Yeah, it's an amazing community. Yeah. And nah. but in reality, that the the people who are really involved and doing the work is a small is a small amount of people. You're correct. Yeah, and you know something I always encourage my white friends to, to 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 think about is when you in these spaces and you at a party or you at some big gathering, like you like damn everybody, all my friends are here. Everybody in the cannabis game is here. Stop for a second and think to yourself, how many black people are here? Yes, thank you. Right, like mm-hmm. are we really inviting everybody to the party? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And like. How many black people are here that are in positions of like actual ownership and actual influence and, and power? Um, right. So um, we, that we really that that, that exact that exact question, uh, just a shameless plug here. That exact question fueled the topic for our season one, episode four uh, uh, episode. It was uh, exactly about that because. I walked into a diversity, a diversity breakfast. It was, it was slated as a diversity breakfast and everybody looked like me. And I was like, hold, <laughs> hold. What's yeah. That's happening? goofy shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just like, I mean, you know, like if you're just going to make fun of it, don't even do it. You right. Know what I mean? <laughs> like, I mean, right. what's diversity? Like, I mean, and that and right now diversity in the cannabis world is white women and veterans. That's diversity. Uh, yeah. We've had oh, that yeah. discussion so many times. Uh, I I just as as a white woman who is a veteran. Hi, everybody. I am a a minority by a step of one. Okay, I am a step down from a white man. I'm still a woman and I still I'm still uh, not as free in this country as a white man, but I'm damn close. I'm damn close and highly associated and highly protected. Yeah, I mean, uh, I will argue that you're a first class citizen. Yeah, and I would argue that, that too. Looks like me is a second class citizen, and black women, arguably, in my position, you know, I think they're the most unprotected people. I agree with you. Third class citizens. So yeah. I mean, um, I mean, the idea in the cannabis world that, like, um, I don't know. There's just this stigma that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. This is a stigma that like, you know, even though we're only like 13 percent of the country, we're going to somehow like take over this industry. Um, I mean, I think I think also um, there's this weird thing that happens with the conversation of race in any um, genre where when white when black people start discussing like a reparation of any kind, like, hey, you know, we've been disenfranchised by this particular plant. For this long, we feel like we are owed these things. We should be able to do this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we should be offered these things. Mm-hmm. It's crazy to see, like, not racist white people be like, whoa, wait a minute. Backpedal, backpedal, backpedal. Back back it's just like, whoa. Like, I, I, you know, and then those same people will get out in front of crowds that look like me and call themselves an ally. Right, right. Like, but where they want to yeah. wear it as a badge. You know, um, Mm -hmm. so that that that's always trippy to me. Um, But I mean, going back to what I was saying earlier in regards to the momentum, um, I I would argue that there has never really been any momentum in in Missouri that was true in nature. Right. That Mm -hmm. didn't have a hidden agenda. Right. Um, Because, I mean, I, I, I could argue. That agenda, you know, the uh, amendment two that where we brought brought in med that had a hidden agenda, which essentially would be amendment three. Um, right. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that was set up for the the, the amendment three play. Um, so we really haven't had any pure, clean energy in regards to like just putting this behind us as a culture, moving on to another issue. And setting this up to where it's something that can help people that need it medically, yeah. want to be grown, and this is how you want to relax after work. 
go for it. Um, but we haven't really come to a place where we can have that conversation in a way that um, white men don't feel like they're missing some kind of huge uh, monetary opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right. Black people don't feel like, well, fuck, why were we even here in the first place? Like we, we've right. always five years of our lives being at any of these tables with any of you people. Right. Okay. Trying, trying to affect the change and then not being included in that change Correct. when, when it's considered, uh, I, yeah, 1000% agree with everything you said. Uh, just wanted to finish a thought that I kind of like let dangle out in the sky. Um, as a white woman and a veteran, we are not minorities. We aren't. Like, if you look, like, listen, this is my, this is my, this is my stance on it. Uh, listen, if you watch any political commercial, like any commercial at all that, that is politically gauged, majority of the, when they have veterans on screen, a majority of those veterans are old white men that fought in some long ago war, which thank you for your service also. But like a majority of the military is, uh, white men, uh, and then women, white women. And, um, that's a majority of what the military is made up of. There are minorities in the military. Yes. But a majority of the military is made up of the majority white men. So, but I mean, also like, I like to jump in here and say that like, it's a very specific, the majority of white men in the military is a very specific kind of white man. That's and also man, true. They also recruit that kind of white man. Yes. And um, oftentimes they are not people that grow up in an urban environment with all types of, you know, oftentimes there are people when they get to boot camp, it's really the first time they've had close encounters and yes. daily encounters with black folks. This is, this is all very, this is all so much, there's so much truth. And what you're saying is all so true. Um, I, the, the, the military is, I, dare I say, a predatory uh, organization. Watch yourself now. Watch yourself. I know. I know. I know. I'm going to get canceled. I'm a veteran. <laughs> but. I'm going to get canceled. Just remember, I did it too. But I, why did I go into the military? I swore at eight, when I was 18, everybody, I lived in the South. Everybody was trying to be like, join the military. And I was mm -hmm. like, never will I ever. Okay. Never will I ever, never will I ever. No, my parents were both in the military. It wasn't my thing. I didn't want to do it. So I didn't do it. And I went out on my own. And I went to college at a at a community college and I worked and I had to pay for that shit myself because we didn't have no family monies. Who who's whose family? Not mine. So okay, so I'm working. I'm trying to work in the legal field. That's where I want to be. I'm like trying to still go to school. And guess what? I can't do. I can't pay my rent and go to school at the same time. So what did I do? I said, I think I'm going to join the military. Why did I join the military? Because they have the GI Bill. So I can go to school and I can pick my rate, except that I was too low ranking to be in the rate that I wanted to be in, which was legal. So I had to go into the rate that they were trying to fill up. So they were taking transfers of other people in other rates or wh whatever y'all, all the people call it. And they were taking new people to go in and be MAs. And then we all thought we were going to do something fun and be police officers and learn that. And we learned all the training, be a police officer. And then they were like, guess what? We're going to send you all to war. Now the only thing you do is force protection. Da da. And they prey on a certain type of person because I couldn't do, I couldn't go to school. I couldn't pay for college without a little help. And my family couldn't help me. I didn't have a rich relative that's going to leave me yeah. money. And just do this or go back home to your shitty lifestyle. Where yeah, shitty I ain't family. going to live with my mama and, again. Yeah, exactly. No. You know what I'm saying? Thank like, you. I love you, mom. But no. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, that's no, super real. Yeah. I get it. So, so they prey on a certain type of people, especially in the enlist, enlisted ranks, 
Um, and and they get those people. They get them because then so then so then you have that you have your clothes are paid for. You have uh, your house. Somehow we got muted. Anyways, uh, your room and board is paid for. Your your clothing is paid for. You get a paycheck every two weeks. Uh, they they feed like they feed you. I mean, and it's not like you're spending that money on anything because everything's already paid for. So you come out with this large sum of money, mm -hmm. right? You yep. go buy your Camaro, or 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 you're like you me. go buy your Camaro, buy you know all the big shit, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. What else are you going to spend your money you on? An American flag painted on the back they of it. They pay you, you know for a I'm uniform saying? allowance to get a new uniform every year, at least one. And they pay you for housing. They give you money to, to sleep in your house. Right. Yeah. And then, and then when I got out of the military, oh my God, I was mind blown at, at the amount of not being able to make enough money to live in a little cottage house. With one bedroom. Like, I was like, what is happening here? Different. It's a diff because yeah. nobody's paying me for nobody's like, oh, you're in a you're in a dangerous area where I was like not really doing dangerous things. I was standing like looking at a clock or whatever. Right. And then they just paid me extra money to do that. <laughs> like because people don't pay you for what you do. They pay you for what you put up with. Right. 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 So, yeah, I mean, it's it's it's. Yeah, it's predatory. Sorry for you, patriots. Uh, but yeah, you know, they are looking for a certain type of person, and that's and you fit the bill. So, congrats. You know what I'm I don't saying? No, you know, um, I had this conversation a couple weeks ago with another guy who, you know, uh, is an associate, I guess. Uh, but the conversation came up about uh, there's a new documentary out about uh, Ma Mahmoud uh, Raouf who was a, a young guy in the, in the 90s who played in the NBA who found Islam and decided to no longer stand for the uh, for the national anthem. Okay, um, I know this story like just first, a little. He, he's like the first like Kaepernick type of deal. Uh, the NBA started fining him for not standing during the national anthem. Then he worked a deal with the, with the NBA saying that, you know, I'd stand, but I'm just going to stand and I'm going to pray. And, you know, I'm going to stand with open hands and I'm going to just pray for people. Um, and his famous quote was, I haven't criticized anybody for standing for the flag. I don't know why everybody's criticizing me for standing for sitting. Right. And like, that's a very powerful statement because that is why we're all here. Like I I'll use black folks in our, in our plight uh, for an example. Mm -hmm. um, in 19, in the 1960s, we was fighting for the, we wasn't fighting for the right to vote. We was fighting for the right to have the option to vote. Mm -hmm. We knew it was an inalienable right. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, the, the beauty in this country is that, like, what makes us different from every other country is that we have the right to not stand if we don't want to. Yes. In a communist country. You feel what I'm saying? That's the beauty in the country, right? So... Mm -hmm. Um, and, and military folks, just a reminder, that's what you signed a contract to defend. Is to to defend right. my right to decide not to, right? right. And, and it's a part of my First Amendment, my exactly. First Amendment. And I think a lot of Americans, specifically patriots, get really caught up in that Second Amendment. But that's the Second Amendment. Well, only the first line. First of Amendment yeah. is, you <laughs> know what I'm saying, rest. freedom of speech. And yeah. like, I think. Even to go deeper into that, I think people get caught too caught up in the freedom of speech and don't yeah, get caught up in the freedom stop. to listen, the freedom to listen to the person that's standing across from you and what their perspective is um, about the what their experiences things, are, are what their traumas have been in the same places that you have been, you know, and I think a lot of patriots forget that we live in two Americas. Yeah, well, they don't know. They don't forget. They just they're denier. They deny that that's true. They deny that that's true at all. And uh also, the Constitution guarantees those rights from the government, like not in like, and there's no guarantee of the right to avoid consequence to your speech or your actions. You're free to say whatever the fuck you want to say, but mm -hmm. your words have consequences. Yeah, your actions have consequences, and yeah. I think when they when 
um, those individuals look at the Constitution and they say freedom of speech and then they just stop there. They forget the rest of there's a there's whole a there's whole, a whole the for, for you know right freedom to, of religion right to bear arms. There's right. a whole lot of, like yeah. it doesn't just stop at your right to have a gun. Like, right, right, right. Um, yeah, freedom of religion. Like freedom that's not rest. just for religion. Like, that's everybody. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like you know, I think it's really funny to be a patriot and have an issue with somebody having so having so much look, we all find out new information and we all have new experiences and it changes the, the decisions that we make and, and the positions that we take. Um, so again, I, I would, I would quote him. Um, if somebody is not criticizing what you're doing, don't criticize what they're doing. He's not criticizing why y'all, why y'all standing. Don't criticize him for sitting. Um, and that's the, that's the beauty of the country we live in, you know, is that we have the option to have all these different opinions and it's not a communist state. And we don't have to all act like, you know, everything is great. You exactly. know, we're not in Russia, you know what I'm saying? In a war we don't want to be in. And we got to act like, oh, man, we want to be in this war. You know what I mean? I, my cousin just died. But that's cool because this is a war we should have took anyway. Uh, we we have the we have the option not to play that game here. And, um, right. You know, I, I like to live in one reality. Um, and I think uh, we would get a lot further and just politically and otherwise if we all just kind of stayed in one reality. And stop letting words like we, we off the time let words like take away the accountability of people's actions. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because we'll just sum it up. We'll just be like, um, oh, oh uh, I, I use an easy one. Nazis are evil. And it's yeah. like, I OK, well, I mean, what's evil? You feel what I'm I, saying? Evil I, to I you mean, might not be sense. evil to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. say what it is. Nazis were fucked up for these reasons. They tried right. to make a, a perfect race. And in doing so, they got rid of hundreds of millions of people that, you know what I'm saying, that they felt like were invading their space. Like, let's really go into, you know what I mean, how yeah. it was fucked up um, and not use terms like evil. So, right. like, right. explain what that means. To exactly. Come on, right. man. I feel Come you. On. I feel you on that. Um, we're celebrating over here because it is 422 now. See, double celebration over on the West Coast. What's up, West Coast? Oh, oh wow, yes. Wow, 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 a woo woo sighting. Wow, we call lady. She was standing up here a second ago. Oh, a woo woo oh. sighting. Love. She's a nice people. <sighs> Hello. He doesn't. He knows that I'm pointing the camera at him, and he just chooses not to look. Yes, at him. we I, we have a pre banana pre -banana yeah. here too. Ridiculous. He won't look at the camera at all. He'll be like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> He's hiding his face right now. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, she I want to pit a potamus for Christmas. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, th this conversation is super interesting. As always, we want to have you back for more conversations. Sure. Uh, but this is our Monday show, so um, we like to kind of keep it ch chill and short. Uh, so we're going to dive right into uh, some upcoming events and then into our Would You Rather. Oh, also, we haven't advertised today at all, so we'll <laughs> we'll do that before the Would You Rather. <laughs> um, so uh, first things first, the upcoming – can you scroll down to the upcoming because I – forgot you had it up there there's some upcoming events we don't have any guests slated for the 15th but we do have a guest on the 20th and the 22nd um so on the 20th we're gonna have good times they have uh little jello shots that have cannabis in them so super excited to talk to them and their beginnings etc and where you can find them they're at all kinds of events around colorado right now um, and then on the 22nd, we have Deb Nash coming in. Um, she's got a, like a Canna, uh, Answers. Canna Answers Facebook page, right? And she's in Missouri as well, too, right? I think so. I, think so. Mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah. Um, uh, who, who uh, was it Jen that recommended her, actually, and said, hey, and then connected us, I think. So we got her. We got her coming on. Um, and so have your, have your questions ready. Uh, for that uh, on the 22nd. If you have questions about cannabis, especially if you're in Missouri, have those questions ready for us so that we can 
we can ask uh, somebody also. And also, if you have any questions right now, Wiley will know. <laughs> he knows the answers. Um, you were in our debate um, and it, it was so it was like you're you know, you made your points really calmly. And uh, we we were really hoping during that debate that we would be on the fence a little bit about it. But honestly, we were a little worried about it. And like you said, the, the most of the expungements haven't been, um, haven't been automatic. You have to apply for them um, or have somebody help you apply for those things. You have to apply for all of them. And it's yeah. not like they're waiving like lawyer fees or court costs or any of those things. Right, right. They're just approving you to go through, I guess, maybe. or something. Which, I mean, again, that was my yeah. argument from the beginning. This is the exact same process that we already had in place. Like, you could have done this prior to Amendment 3 passing. Yeah. Violent, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, conviction. So, we, like I said, we love having y'all on from Missouri because, yeah, we get to know these things firsthand, what's really going on out there. Um, so super excited to always have you guys from Missouri. Um, so th that's all that we have planned right now. But we are talking to um, uh, Randy from. Why is the name slipping my mind right now? Main, Main ingredient. ingredient. Sorry, I was seeing the M and I was like, say it um, from Main Ingredient. Um, we're working on scheduling him really soon as well. Um, we're just we're trying to figure out are we going to record? Are we going to go live? So. Once we get that figured out, we're going to have Randy from Main Ingredient on. He's going to come on and talk to us about, um, I think he has still, he's working with those patches and uh, and those types of things. So we're going to talk to him about those patches and see how they're working. Um, we are continuing to book for March. So if you guys know anybody, thanks, Jen, for the suggestion. Uh, we loved it and we're following through on it. So, yay. Yay to that. Um, so, okay, before we end the show, we always do a would you rather. So you ready? Sure. I have two. I have two. I kept them. Sometimes they get ridiculous, but I kept them relatively not, not gross. So. Oh, well, thank you. Appreciate You're that. You're welcome. Yeah. Sometimes they get, they, sometimes they get like, sometimes what did you just what? say to me? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> okay. So the first one is, would you rather be friends with the aliens? This is relevant because we've been seeing some UFO sightings around the country, like real life. People are shooting them out of the shooting air. Three of them out of the air. Right? Like, I need y'all to said? calm down. We don't need to go to war with the aliens right now. Uh, so, okay. So would you rather be friends with the aliens or have alien tech? Which means that I guess we're not going to be friends. We probably have to fight for that. Nah, I'd just be homies. I'd rather just be homies. Because the homies gonna let you use they tech. Get the best of all worlds. There you go. Yeah. And you don't have to get fucking hit with a goddamn Marvin the Martian gun and turn I... it in the incinerator. Like, yeah, I'm gonna just be cool with the <laughs> humans are so I'll, weird I'll, with like, this alien what? rap. Like a pot of mine was just like, you know, how we gonna <laughs> communicate with them. I'm like, bro, they just traveled a billion miles light years to get I'll here. You what? don't think that they can communicate with us? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like Ooh, we ain't going out. <laughs> Let's be yeah. friends. That's it. That's most of the audience is like that too. Let's be friends. Yeah, yeah. everybody wants to be friends because yeah. you're right. Because your friends let you borrow their outfits and their tech, and and, uh, yeah. and also mm -hmm. you can smoke doobies together and you can learn a new language. So uh, I'm going, and also I mean, God, can you could take a ride. I mean, yeah, you could probably <laughs> go to space. You know. Could be kind of cool. You know what as mean? long as so as long as people in Kansas, <laughs> as long as people in Kansas don't shoot you out of the air, or St. Louis. Hey, listen, I'm not hating on y'all, but bring it down. <laughs> just, that I mean, we got guns, bro. We got uh, guns. Stop, you think we, got, we just got guns to like put them up on a wall and not use them? <laughs> yeah. Colorado. We were staying. We were staying out there uh, this summer, and like four blocks away. We just we heard we heard some uh some gunfire and I just looked at her and I was like, Was that a gun? She's like, Yeah, I think so. And I was like, All right. I, I mean, it wasn't us. like yeah, I think so. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's not, you know, 
It, it was otherwise a nice day, though. It was otherwise a nice day. Holler at uh, Smoke 2.0 and uh, Kirk for for that stay. That was a, the Airbnb was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, had all mm-hmm. the great amenities in it, and I highly recommend it because it's also 420 friendly. Well, heard. That's what's up. Yeah, it's a out sweet, in St. Louis. Joint. Don't let the gunfire uh, shoot you away. There's not a single neighborhood you can stay in in St. Louis. Nah, my homeboy's got an Airbnb that's pretty dope. It's called the uh, Cool Airbnb, and he built a whole like uh, skate park in his backyard. He's got that's like cool. a full that's studio cool. there. Like it's pretty dope. Dope. That's in St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um. So yeah, uh, check those out. So I want to do the second one. Um, Okay. This one, I don't, mm, I feel like I know, but I don't know. I feel like I'm confused by the question a little bit, but go ahead. Would you rather be stuck in traffic or be stuck on public transportation? Like you're stuck on the bus. You can't get off the bus. You know why? Because that bus is in traffic. I know. I like traffic. Uh, Yeah. That's a dumb one. I don't like that one. Oh, yeah. I was like, I want to edit it to be like, Let's just... would you rather be stuck in traffic or use public transportation but get there ten minutes faster. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That. Okay. Okay. Right. Change right. it so that we don't forget. Right. It. Yeah. Okay. Nah, I'm definitely. You know. Nah, I'm definitely on the bus I, or, or the train or whatever I'm on. Yeah. If I'm getting there ten minutes faster, absolutely. And if you're stuck in traffic, you're ten minutes late. I'm on public transportation. Yeah. So would you rather be stuck in traffic and be 10 minutes late, like this is your life, or uh, have to always use public transportation but arrive 10 minutes early? I just take the public transportation because that could be an Uber, that could be a train, that could be a bus, that could be a taxi. Yeah, you don't have to get to read. That could be a plane. Like You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I don't like driving anyway. So, yeah. I like driving my vehicle. Uh, I like road trips, like long road trips. But like as far as like to and from traffic, I'm going to go with public transportation. I agree. I think. I mean, I don't now because I don't drive into those situations so often. But if I could eat more easily utilize public transportation, I would rather that than have to sit in traffic and always be late. Right. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm on public transportation. I'm not. Also, the more you use public transportation, the more uh, accessible it is for people to use. And there are people um, in this world that you had mentioned that we live in two different Americas. I would argue that we live in several different Americas because there are there are individuals in this world that like literally don't have like fresh or like everything is canned, everything's processed. They, they don't have fresh the access to fresh fruits and vegetables. They I mean, don't have you, access. I mean, you ain't even got to go that far. You can just say it's people in the United States that don't have fresh water. Like, exactly. Fresh exactly. Water in Jackson, Mississippi, that don't have fresh water. Everybody talk about Flint. Everybody talks water. about Flint, but exactly that's Jackson not got a whole place. situation. They living in 1968 in Jackson. They still drinking well water. Like it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. There's so many states in the United States such a rich country but only for a percentage of the people and uh and you've got people in this country that uh don't have a place to live that uh that don't have fresh water that don't have access to the things that we need to survive like the like having having canned uh meals is is great if if the zombies are attacking right okay but we live in a world where we have access to fruits and vegetables. And so there are places uh, where there are food deserts and the, the only processed food gets through into those spaces. We're lucky they get water, honestly. Um, so, so like, think about that when, when the next time you think, Oh, um, you know, that it's not as bad as, as what somebody is describing. Yeah, it is just because you haven't lived it or experienced it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had friends have some crazy, amazing experiences with lots and lots of money and, and hidden away in, in, in places. Right. Right. And I'm like, I've never seen that much money to hide in, in places like that. Like I would like, okay, that's, that's an interesting thing right and i've had friends 
who have like also on the opposite end of the complete opposite end of that spectrum who have like lived in their vehicle who didn't know where their next meal was coming from and i mean a lot of us grew up that way there were times that we didn't know you know my mom didn't eat sometimes she worked several jobs it's it's what life is like for some people so just kind of keep that in mind when you know try try not to take everything for granted try to remember that that like this is a privilege like what you're looking at right now this all of this all of us privilege it's a privilege it's a privilege to be here and I'm glad that we get to experience it with you, but not everybody gets access to the internet or, you know, the equipment that we're using to even have this conversation. So um, I went to a Popeye's one day and this kid said, I don't have a cell phone. And I'm, my mind exploded for a second. It took me a second to like reel it back in and be like, not everybody has that access. So Anyways, we don't want to end on this sad note. Uh, I would, <laughs> I would say though, but the the whole point of that whole diatribe was uh, support your public transportation, support the public things that are available in your area because in Kansas important. City, uh, public transportation is free. Actually, you know, we're trying to make yeah. that move in St. Louis where we make all tra public transportation free. I would like that. I think that's yeah. super cool um, because I mean, let's face it, if you own public transportation. You're probably not rich. That's true. That's true. I mean, yeah. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. just make it free. Exactly. Um, this says, in the age of social media challenges, I challenge everyone to do two things this year that give back to your local community. I feel that's like Bobby that's such a doable <laughs> thing. That's such a doable um such a doable suggestion i think that absolutely we should we should absolutely strive to do that and um once you do a couple once you my problem is i don't leave my house in the winter so i'm so i'm so stoked for warm weather right now um and i know that also that's a super fucking privileged thing to say because i can like ignore things in the winter because i'm cold right and then what that's not a good excuse so what a piece uh, of shit but you know what I'm saying, though? Gosh. I know. I know. I know. I'm so, so bad. Um, but um, I do I do um, engage more when when I'm like in the sunshine. Uh, but I think that that challenge is a doable challenge. I also think that once you start engaging in your community and meeting the people in your community, that you're going to want to do it more than twice. I think you're going to want to be out there more and meet more people because it's fun. It's a good time. <laughs> You've been getting out this winter. You have. I have more done a good job this year. Self credit for. And so. I've been vitamin D deficient. I'm just going to blame it on that, like as a whole circle. And and now I'm I'm good. I'm getting my vitamin. My I'm getting outside. I'm taking a little pill. And uh, what otherwise anybody was thinking about too. That's all. All of that is happening. <laughs> <laughs> This show is brought to you by Queen Kitty Seltzer. Pop this kitty, put it in your mouth. Um, check out our website. Uh, it's www.queenkittyseltzer.com. Ooh, let's see. Where's the banner at? There oh, it I also is. made a little thing oh. now. I also made a little picture. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did. There it is. Right there. Sorry to cover up our faces. Um, so Queen Kitty Seltzer, www.queenkittyseltzer.com. Uh, you can check us out also on solo.to slash Queen Kitty Seltzer. Queen Kitty has no THC, no sugar sweeteners, zero yak in the back. So that means it doesn't leave that little weird flavor on the back of your tongue. It's organically grown hemp and natural botanical flavors that we use to create um, the flavors that we have, which are Lemon Kiss, Bubblegum Burst, and Nearly Naked. Nearly Naked is actually no flavors at all. Just plain. Just plain. Tastes like water. You can find it um, currently in Durango at Magpie's Newsstand, Cloud 9, Lively Day Con, The Roost, Animus River, uh, Animus City Theater. That's oh, sorry. Incorrect. That's a little typo. Like, that was Animus team. City Theater. <laughs> um, DGO, uh, that's Durango Aesthetics and Wellness. In the mountains, you can find it at Pier 13 Liquor uh, in Vail, Bottle and Cork in Edwards, Smoke and Bra in Frisco, Dark Horse Liquor and Craig, and House of Vibes 
uh, coffee in Silverthorne. And uh, we're working on a couple of Denver locations uh, that you will see them there as well. So, so Queen Kitty Seltzer, pop this kitty, put it in your mouth. Oh, second wind. We just had a, oh, a yes. sale at second yeah, wind exactly. uh, little market mm -hmm. in, uh, in Denver. We did. We're going to do a delivery tomorrow at second wind. Uh, it's a little convenience store in Denver, so go check them out. They've got some cute stuff in there. Yeah, it's like a coffee boba shop, too. And then and they, they have, have like, like a, little a little basement um, party space. Yeah, they have a space you can uh, rent out mm -hmm. and a uh, community space. Yeah. Um, I think they're attached to a, another dispensary, so we'll we'll wait for sponsorship. Carmaceuticals. And <laughs> I'll say it. I You know, it's fine. Uh, yeah, they're attached to Carmaceuticals, so yeah, check them out. Um any final thoughts? Anybody? Um, no. <laughs> Wiley, any any final thoughts you want to leave our audience with? Uh, yeah, man. Just, you know, stay friends with the aliens. You know what I'm saying? Let's not start intergalactic wars, too. We got enough wars <laughs> on Earth. You know what I mean? I don't know why we feel like we can take out aliens. I aliens don't know why. The or the government. They have drones. That you know, will Andre 3000 once famously said, is aliens amongst our kin look again because I swear I spot one every now and then. You know? Words yep. of wisdom to live by. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave y'all with that. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> you guys, be nice to yourself. Make sure that... Sorry. <laughs> make sure that you put your mask on before assisting others. It's really important. It's hard to pour from an empty cup. Mm -hmm. Cultivate love and bring it to you. And you deserve it course as always stay lifted mm, stay lifted y'all mm. we love you thank you so much i didn't forget we're still doing it <laughs> we got it it's loud so sorry for it <laughs> she's she's wearing her little christmas sweater come join us on the 15th where we don't know what's going to happen we have no idea <laughs> but we'll, but we'll be prepared by it'll then. be a good session it's as always great. We'll see you then. Set your alarms, set your alerts, tell your friends, share, share, share. We love you guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for Thanks, joining Wiley. us, Wiley. We love talking to you. Right on. Fun as always. Woo, woo, woo. Stay lifted, everybody. All right, y'all.